kind of just broke things down in practice mode for you guys. But this will be in the ebook. Just didn't want to have, you know, there's not a lot of plays in gun type for me to just fully elaborate on it. But give me one sec. And we will break this down. Break it down like James. Okay. So first thing that we're gonna do. <clears throat> not really anything special as far as personnel. Um, but what I do do is if you happen to have anybody with a short in or a short out elite, you know, make sure they're at receiver. Um, in my case with the Raiders. I do use Waller as my number three receiver so I can get him outside. Um, I can also, with packages, I can move them around. I can move them to either outside. I can move them to, this, to either in point. A lot, a lot of movements that you can do. Okay. So, first play that we're going to go over is going to be your run. You're always going to have something to kind of keep people honest. Um, you're going to be passing a lot in this formation, but you know, you need to have something to keep them honest. And like I was kind of just elaborating on earlier is following your pulling guard. So I do run this a lot to the right. I do not run to the left, my left side. Um, I mean, my right side, uh, guard and tackle aren't necessarily good at holding their blocks one-on-one -on -one. so you always want to run into the strength of your offense and your pulling guard needs to be fast and you need to be able to read off your pulling guard so obviously the first play that we're going to go over we're just going to go through random plays okay so the only thing that we're going to do is i'm going to i need y'all to pay attention to this you do not want to motion this guy okay this guy needs to block the sound Okay, it needs to be blocking the extra defender. So you're not going to motion him. You're going to motion the receiver. Okay? And then while you're motioning him, flip up on your stick for the impact block. And the only thing that you're going to have to do is, like I said, is you're going to be reading your pulling guard. Okay? Number 70. So we're going to read off him whether we cut back or if we follow through or if we kick out. So we just read him. Sometimes you can get, you know, solid four or five yards. Um, people start pinching in and stuff and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Sometimes you kick it out. They start sliding or spreading out. Sometimes you can just run it down the middle. So it's a simple run. You just read off of your guard. He's going to tell you where to go. See, there we get a good run right there. Okay, so that's the first thing. It's going to be your stock run. It's going to open up your next play. Okay. The next play I more or less use when I know people are just cover three happy. And the play the play is called PA cross. I do like to run this to the short side of the field. So I just kinda per se. I hate doing this against two four five, but we'll be alright. Now you don't necessarily need to do any motions. Um you could, but you don't necessarily need to. Uh, the way I like to do this is just, let me go ahead and put it where it is. Like I said, I like, I did not, bear with me. Sides, my bad, my bad. Let's run the play in a sec. <clears throat> All right, back to it, my bad. Now, there's going to be really just two reads. You'll have an option for a third read. It really just depends if how many of the people they're sending. Um, obviously, your primary read is going to be the red route um, coming across the field. Usually, I don't even 
think about that. If I know they're in cover three, I'm just going to look for that corner post. But I'm just going to go through the read progression here. We're going to go ahead and just hit triangle. Read them across the field, and usually you can just kind of get a five, six, seven, eight yard pass. Okay, it's pretty solid. Something that can kind of, you know, dictate their user away from what you really want. So okay? you just go ahead and take it, read it, read it, throw it down underneath. So it's a solid read versus cover three underneath. Then you open up your second read that you what you really want is going to be that corner post route. He's just going to kind of read on it, wait for him to bend, and then he's just going to get right behind that curl flat every time unless they set their zone drops, okay? Um, <clears throat> you got to be careful when setting zone drops because if they start setting those 25, 20, 25 yards, it's going to open up the, um, the underneath crosser all day, okay? So if they start setting their zone drops too deep, you, you always have that, that underneath option that they have to respect. Um, also with that, like I said, those are, those are going to be your two reads that I like to do. Is going to be that post route and that then that crosser. Okay. Now let's get into the other. The next play that I like to use mainly against you know. Ever since, I think this last month, man, I've been seeing a lot of people using man coverage, right? I see a lot of people running two man under. I see um, a lot of cover ones and stuff. This is going to be your man, two man under beater, okay? Not only will you be able to attack it underneath, but you also have the, op the option to kind of attack it over the top as well. Um, you can really attack user safeties with this or anybody that just likes to bite routes underneath. I'm going to run this and then I'm going to have to go into the highlight to show you what's happening here. You're going to create a lot of rubs. So what I'm going to do, if I'm going up against man coverage, instead of this spot route, I'm going to drag the spot route and I'm going to go ahead and motion this whip route over. Okay, so now we got four routes on one side of the field. And what's going to happen is that linebacker, he's going to get caught in traffic. There's going to be there's going to be some bumping going on. That drag route is going to be your first read, okay? If they're versus man, it depends. Um, sometimes they 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 play it good. Sometimes they they don't. So we're just going to run it. And watch how wide open that drag route gets, okay? Now, again, sometimes it gets covered, or sometimes they might decide to shade a user over there, you know, to defend it because it's going to keep, it's going to cook them, okay? They, they're they're going to get tired of it. A lot, so you're just gonna be able to keep it. And I'm gonna show you again. Boom! It's gonna get open. It's gonna get easy yards off of it. Sometimes you know you can get a little bit longer, and you can get you know good rack off of it, 10, 15 yards. Now, if they cover that, the next read that I like to go to is gonna be the whip route that follows it. Okay, so now we look. You know, wait, and then you got the whip route coming behind it. Usually, um, with those safety spreading out and playing deep, you're, getting, you're definitely just going to be able to go the, up the field. Sometimes you can get 30, 35 yards off of this one play. You know, it just really depends on how they're shading. If they're constantly shading over the top, you can always just keep cooking them with that. If they want to keep playing man coverage, they're going to pay. Okay. The next read, the last read that I'm actually going to use is going to be the route over here by Edwards. Okay. Gonna run everything as is and usually you're gonna want to pass lead this to the sideline so that you can get under the safety so if you can do like a seven o'clock pass lead so it's kind of back into the sideline you can click on and get to it so that the safety won't you know if they're shading over the top they won't be able to kind of interfere with you catching it so we're just gonna kind of do it right quick and just like that so that's gonna kill that deep half safety and sometimes you can kind of squeeze it for a deep touchdown sometimes it just really just depends who you're who you're playing if they're using it or not you know let me show you one more time just kind of pass lead back into the sideline seven o'clock read not nine o'clock you do nine o'clock sometimes with bad quarterbacks as I've been experiencing lately, 
they're not going to have a good pass lead. They don't have an ability. They're not going to be able to fit it in where you want. So make sure it is you're pulling back into the sideline. That way you have full control over getting the ball. So you you back into the sideline. You can use her. Okay. So that's going to be your your last read versus two man. Um, you can also use this against like double A gap and stuff, but be mindful. If I'm dealing with like a blitzing formation, I would opt to block the running back and just the running back only. Um, if you don't want to block the running back, you want to keep the running back on his flat route. What you can do is you can motion hike to block the tight end, but you got to get him before he sets. Do it with like a max protect. So there's a lot of stuff you can do in there versus two men. Now, if they're playing cover two. Usually that's what they're going to do because they can't stop the drag routes from playing man coverage. So they're going to have to have flats on the field. So I'm going to show you how this attacks stock cover two. It's actually one of my favorite plays to call too. Do Tampa. Okay. Now. Usually, if they don't do like any preset alignments, usually the motion is going to tell me if they're in man or if they're in like some type of matching coverage or whatever. If I don't see, when I motion him over, if I don't see someone someone follow across, I know that he's in, in, in a stock drop zone, right? So what I'm going to do, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and reset the play, and I'm going to let it stay as is, okay? So you're still going to have some of your reads. That route by Waller needs to stay there versus stock drop two. The reason why is because he needs to go in and gravitate any zones to respect him so he can pull them out. That's the whole reason behind his route concept. Um, and what that does is that's going to open that spot route open for Jones. Okay, So I'm going to just run it in. Run in. We're going to read Jones. Look how wide open he is. Okay. I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to show you why this route is so important that he needs to come in. So when he comes in, he's going to pull that zone away from the middle. See, he's supposed to be in the middle. He's got two routes pulling him. He's got the guy pulling him vertical. Then he pulls him down and out away from the zone of the field where he's supposed to be. Okay, So it's a very important route key for attacking these cover two defenses. Do it again. Just hit the spot route. Just wide open. I'm just going to kill cover two with that. Okay. Now if they're using that, you're going to be looking elsewhere. Okay. So the two reads that I like versus cover two is going to be Edwards and then the tight end route. Now your tight end is technically going to be your primary read versus cover two. And then you can kind of look back to your shoulder and Throw it, throw it to Edwards like we were doing earlier. So we're going to go ahead and just run this route to Moreau. It's going to get over the top. Nice little sideline pass. And then Tampa 2 is a little tricky because sometimes those, those cloud flats do play a little bit deeper than they should in practice mode. So I'm just kind of do it one more time. You just want, like I said, if you want to pass lead to the sideline. Okay, and then the last read we're going to do is going to be Edwards. See, it takes a little bit longer for Edwards' route to get open. If you're going to probably read Edwards' route, I would probably just block the running back or put him in a check release. Probably that'd probably be better. That way you got some help, a little bit more time to make that read. Okay, so that's going to be be able to be cover two. Um, the last one that I like to run is going to be the dry corner concept. It's going to be a combination of everything that we've been been doing, but it's going to have your flood concept built into it, and it's going to have you a nice little quick read. Um, usually I like to do this against people that play like shade over the top or any, any, any of that. Um, Usually like cover four, 
it works it works for, against a lot of different coverages um, in my primary read I'm just gonna look for Waller first and see if I can get him isolated if he's isolated I will throw it to him it's an easy out route it's just like what I do in strong close it's the same exact route from strong close um, that I like to use to pick on like cover fours easy sideline pass um, the only way they're gonna get to it is they gotta be pressed press man shade underneath that's the only way they're gonna be able to stop that. Um, your second read progression is going to be the drag coming across the field usually it's going to be a nice five six seven yards that you can get maybe you can get probably more it's a solid read it's going to get open wide open and across the middle <clears throat> the read that you make after that would be the tight end usually if you have a good tight end you'd make that read but Probably I would put Waller right there if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get into that position, and I would probably put my speed receiver over there where Waller's at. But that would be your next read progression. And like I said, uh, you would probably want to put your best tight end right there. Not necessarily a good route tree for a slower tight end. Um, and then after that, you can read the route over there by Edwards. That would probably be the last in the read progression, and it's gonna get over the top. Okay. So, try to show it one more time. Yeah, they're not going to let me catch it, but y'all y'all see it, it developing. Oh. Here, let me just block him, so. There we go. And nice user. Um, but other than that, that's going to be pretty much everything that you need in gun tight and I will be um, go ahead and putting this in the offensive ebook um, just go ahead and upload it um, anyways I think that's going to pretty much cover everything that I've been doing in gun tight that has been successful for me and I hope it's successful for you guys as well